What's up guys, it's your boy Christian here back at you for Sneaker Talk with a brand new Japan vlog and right now we're in Harajuku, Japan, but we're not going to be here all day. We're actually on our way to Akihabara as you guys can tell by the title of today's video. We're going to go on a little day adventure, see what they have there. Colin, do you know what they have there? Any samples? Anime stuff, electronic stuff. What about you, Dennis? Yeah, it's going to be a whole district full of anime and electronics and department stores. So uh, yeah, you guys obviously are going to come along for the ride since you clicked this video, so let's get moving. So we're just walking along the sidewalk right now and look what I found, a book off. This is a very popular thrift store recycle shop in Japan. They carry CDs, books, and more, so let's go check it out. So we're in the Louis Vuitton bag section right now and uh, they have a really good deal on this bag. This bag is only like 240 US dollars or 280 Canadian. It's a brown Louis Vuitton messenger bag and it actually looks pretty dope. It looks like it's in a little bit of beat up shape, but I mean for $240, that's looking pretty damn tempting. They even have a bunch of porter bags here too, messenger bag, and a like side bag for 4,000 yen. It looks like they have all their sneakers inside of these glass cabinets. So we got a uh, Nike blazer, some Nike Air Pythons, 6,000 yen. We got some Timberlands. There's some more sneakers. HTM Court Forest Highs by Nike here, looking like in brand new condition. Also got this cool colorway of the uh, Air Force One Highs for 5,000 yen. And the rest of the floor looks like it's for books and CDs. So I found the video game section. We got a bunch of old consoles. Ooh, they even got a, a Sega Dreamcast. That's pretty cool. Got a old school NES. Some products here with their boxes still. They came across another store here, which is pretty dope. It has a bunch of like video game merchandise and t-shirts. So uh, yeah, let's check out indoor. We got a Naruto Itachi costume right here. A bunch of hats to choose from. I guess they did a collaboration with Sonic the Hedgehog. So that's pretty cool. A bunch of uh, merch here. Check this out, Yu-Gi-Oh notebook from the OG first season here too. Yo, this denim jacket is crazy. It's like half black denim and then half navy blue denim. Got this cool patch on the back. Check out the front too. Got the zipper, the dragon embroidery. It's going for about $240 US. I got a bunch of Dragon Ball souvenir jackets right here to choose from. And a plethora of anime and video game t-shirts here. So I'll show you guys my favorite. The cool Berserk tee. Ah, this one's pretty cool too. Mega Man 30th Anniversary tee. I'm tempted to cop this, but they have an even better one right behind it. And this one is actually really, really sick. A shout out to my Battle Network people. Expensive though, expensive. This is 5,000 yen. Got a bunch of anime shirts here too. We also have a bunch of like collectible items here. We got Crash Bandicoot, we got some Mario stuff too, even these amiibo looking things. And this, this might be my favorite section. Got a bunch of sneakers too guys, a bunch of anime like print sneakers. And this is pretty dope. They got like Sonic the Hedgehog sneakers right here. The same thing that Sonic actually wears. And it's not that expensive, only 7,000 yen tax included. Dragon Rampa anime uh, slip-on sneakers going for about $40, pretty dope. Sega Dreamcast sneakers. If you want to check out the store, it's called Indoor Store Video Game and Apparel and Merchandise. And you can even get Nintendo DS and 3DS games from the Gachupons in front of the store. What the heck? We made it! Akihabara. This place has like everything. There are tons of anime stores like this one, like Liberty Anime behind me. They're all over the street. There's at least like 50 to 60 here. And then there's also lots of other places like cafes too. So we're probably going to hit up a maid cafe so that I can show you guys what that looks like. But uh, I want to show you guys one thing that some stores have here that not many others do throughout Tokyo. Some stores have like mystery bags out front that you can check out. They're pretty cheap. This one here is 3,000 yen. This one here is 1,000 yen. And they're like themed mystery bags. So if you're a huge fan of a certain anime, you can pick up a bunch of items for the low and uh, just grab one of these mystery bags. So it's like a little Christmas present for yourself. You don't really know what you're getting. Some of the items might not be as sought after. Some of the items might be pretty awesome. So definitely worth checking out these mystery bags if you do roll through Akihabara. out a video game store here, a retro video game store, and uh... This 
place is actually quite, quite big. I've never seen this many Super Famicoms in one store by itself. Old school Nintendo games as far as the eye can see. We got some old consoles here too. We got some PlayStation 1s, PlayStation 2s, Nintendo GameCube. What the heck is this? The family computer. Hmm. Damn, this is really cool to see. They also have some Game Boy Advance games with the original boxes still. You would never see that in Canada. And of course, they also have a ton of other Game Boy Advance games not with their boxes. Ooh, this one looks familiar. Play this one growing up. Hey, they even have Mario Kart Advance too. Ooh, wow, this is actually really surprising to see. They got the uh, Pokemon Silver game for the DS. They even have the gold one with the box and it comes with the uh, that tracker. Oh my my, they even have the Game Boy Advance SP. I used to have a navy blue one of that. Oh wow, there's a uh, Game Boy Advance Micro down there too. They even have dedicated Super Smash Bros. Uh, GameCube controllers for the Wii U. That's pretty dope. I had no idea that there were Shin Chan games for the Super Famicom. My mind is blown right now. This game right here, Super Mario 64, was my childhood. And you can't forget Mario Kart, Star Fox, Pokemon Stadium, and Pokemon Stadium 2. This might be one of the most expensive games out of all of them. GoldenEye for about 60 Canadian dollars. It's beautiful, they have Mega Man Battle Network series of games here too. This is the reason I love Mega Man. They even have OG Tamagotchis here too. Looking around this store and seeing all these other video games for Game Boy Advance and Super Famicom and Nintendo 64 really is a slap in the face as a Canadian gamer because this just shows us how much we missed out on all these games that never made it to a North American port. So yeah, the Japanese, the Japanese got the best video games in the world, that's for sure. So we were just in Retro Game Camp right behind me and this street is not short of any video game stores at all. You literally walk a couple more steps forward to the right and ba bam We have yet another retro video game store here too. So just for time reasons, since this is a general vlog today, we're not going to go into every single video game or anime store, but I'll show you guys the highlights. Like this, an original Game Boy Color with the box. This store has the sealed copies of uh, Pokemon Sapphire, and of course Pokemon Crystal, and Pokemon Fire Red. It's too bad they don't have Leaf Green. One thing to note is that a lot of these games actually say 2018 battery exchange completed, and what that means is that they have done the battery swap for the actual game itself. Now the reason that is is because the original Game Boy Color games actually run off battery power as well. So if the battery in your cartridge dies, that means you're gonna lose your entire game save. So they switched out the batteries themselves here so you don't have to worry about that happening. So you're getting like a fully ready to go brand new Game Boy Color game without, you know, it being completely brand new. So that also means if you were to buy a brand new Game Boy Color game sealed and have it, you know, just try to play it right out of the box, it might not work because the battery might have died over time. And the store also has a ton of Tamagotchis. And a small variety of English games. Holy cow, they want 6,800 yen for that. That's like $75 Canadian. I think I sold this game to EB Games or uh, GameStop for about $5. Portable pocket SNES console for about 120 bucks. This is what? I need this in my life. It also turns out that this store is Retro Game Camp, but it's the first and second floor. And the one we were just in a second ago was their basement floor.
There are a ton of like gachupons and random alleyways here in Akihabara too. This place is loaded with them. Gachupons ranging from 200 yen, so about two US dollars. That gachupons that take 300 yen or three dollars. There's probably about 80 just in this one alleyway alone. So there's probably something for everybody depending on the animes that you like. So in Akihabara, there are a ton of video game stores, a bunch of anime stores, and well, there's also some mature anime and mature manga stores as well. We just went to a couple, and I can't show them to you guys because I get this video demonetized, but there are a ton of mature manga options and stores available in Akihabara, just so you know. We've just spent like the last 30 minutes inside of these mature manga stores. Now we're finally going into something clean for once. This store is called Anime and it's one of the biggest anime manga stores or franchises in Japan. Transgate vape juice. This is a thing in Japan. I want to vape now. I don't even vape, but I want to vape just because they have this here. There's a bunch of stores just like this in Akihabara. It's a really tiny like anime, video game, hobby store and uh, there's like no room to walk around. It's really, really crowded in here. We're done our adventures here in Akihabara, Japan and we're gonna be coming back here later this week. So the adventure is not quite done yet. There's a bunch of like maid cafes and stuff we still have to hit up, so we'll come back here later in the week. But for now, we're gonna head back to Shibuya, pick up my girlfriend, and go get some sushi at this conveyor belt sushi place I go to all the time. Yo, that was delicious. I am so full and that was really, really cheap. Next up, we're gonna grab some dessert at the uh, Krispy Kreme Shibuya. Krispy Kreme Shibuya is right beside the Toho Cinemas. Let's head up the Krispy Kreme Madonna. Yo, these donuts look so good. Oh my gosh, we're gonna go with the uh, original glaze today, but they got some other stuff too. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Here's a look at their menu so you guys can see what they have here at Krispy Kreme in Japan. The overall cafe Krispy Kreme donut looks really, really good. Watermelon donut, and I went with the original glazed donut right here. I used to have these all the time in elementary school. Maybe not all the time, but pretty frequently, maybe once every four or five months. And and yo, those were some of the best donuts I had in my life. So hopefully this tastes as good as they do back home. How's your watermelon donut? So Cullen says his donut actually tastes like watermelon, which is very strange, but it makes sense. It is a watermelon donut. Let's try the, uh, the glazed donut now. Mm. 